Hey everyone, I'm Bite Size Dotaku, and this is the Ever Brilliant Gold Mask. And in this video, we'll be seeing whether an authentic Gold Mask build is viable in the lands between. But like the video and give it to me bite sized. For our equipment, we're using the Gold Mask set, which consists of the Gold Mask rags, Gold bracelets, wrist wraps, and the iconic Radiant Gold Mask. The Radiant Gold Mask has a passive effect of boosting our Golden Order incantations by around 10%. Now unfortunately, this provides us with pretty much non-existent defense and poise, meaning we're super fragile to attacks. A problem partially solved by the cloth's light weight, which will benefit our ability to dodge. Next we have two Golden Order seals, which boost our Golden Order incantations by 10%. These stack with each other and with the Radiant Gold Mask, helping us to get a much needed damage boost to our incantations. I've also opted to add in the Golden Order Greatsword, which is not only perfect for a Gold Mask cosplay, but comes with the weapon art, Established Order, firing a circular blast similar to Wrath of Gold, and it follows up with an energy wave. Next, for our incantations, I've selected from the Golden Order selection. We have Discus of Light, Triple Rings of Light, Radagon's Rings of Light, and Litany of Proper Death, which we'll cover in our strategy section. Then finally, let's explore our talismans, which I've opted to include, considering Gold Mask doesn't fight in the actual game, and therefore we don't have a frame of reference for how his build would work in a purely vanilla form. I've opted to use the Radagon Sword Seal, which would give us 5 extra Vigor, Endurance, Strength and Dexterity for 23 stat points, but this comes at the cost of damage taken increasing by 15%. Ultimately, this will free up 17 stat points if we consider that we're over our strength requirements for the sword to invest in other areas which will benefit our build, like endurance. The Ritual Sword Talisman raises our attack power by 10%, while the Ritual Shield Talisman will boost our defense by 30% when our health is at maximum, essentially giving us heavy armor levels of defense for the first hit against us, and further increasing our damage until we get hit. Then finally we have the Great Jars Arsenal, which will boost our maximum equip load by 19%, allowing us to light roll with our endurance level. And don't forget to make your skin really dark purple on a skinny build to really sell the look. For our stats we have 55 Vigor so we can survive a few hits, and 17 Endurance which will enable us to light roll. 27 Mind will help us spam incantations without having to refill, and our 14 Strength and 16 Dexterity will help us reach our weapon requirements. I've then opted to split our intelligence and faith evenly at 40 each. Our vigor, endurance, strength and dexterity will all be boosted by the Radagon Sword Seal to help us reach the optimal stat levels for this build. And of course, this is based on the level 137 Vagabond with all equipment upgraded one level below the maximum which will avoid you having to use a rare Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. So how do we utilize Gold Mask and why is he both strong and weak at the same time? Well, let's start off with the strengths. We have access to Light Rolling, which is capable of bolting us across the arena quicker than a person can run, making it difficult for enemies to hit us and allowing us to gain some distance. We can then utilize a combination of Discus of Light and Triple Rings of Light to put pressure on our opponents with damaging boomerangs that are hard to track in large numbers. If our opponent is playing aggressively, then Triple Rings of Light followed up by Radagon's Rings of Light is a brilliant combo, as the Radagon's variety has deceptively long range and can even catch opponents in the air for brilliant damage. The Golden Order Greatsword is brilliant for catching an aggressive enemy with the Wrath of Gold style weapon art, and the follow up attack can sometimes strike enemies who panic roll towards you, allowing you to then roll away and continue the assault. You can also just use the greatsword to smack enemies away who play aggressively, waiting for you to cast a spell so they can use a close range attack. But now let's look at the weaknesses, and boy oh boy do we have some. For starters, anything beyond our first piece of damage will melt us, meaning we have to be careful to not get hit, but this is impossible to do if your opponent has throwing knives. Next, all of our attacks have a small wind up time, meaning we're vulnerable to a ranged weapon attack like Thunderbolt, Beast Roar, Stormblade, or any other super quick attack which can interrupt us, especially if they spam it. Super quick opponents who are glued to your crotch will make things very difficult, requiring you to take a risk with the greatsword to slap them away, and any build maximizing damage like dual halberds will likely shred us in two hits. 
This includes long weapons like spears, which can catch us in a roll. Lastly, I tried including Litany of Proper Death as a finisher for enemies with lower health, but this incantation is about as useful as a chocolate teapot, only dealing significant damage against enemies weak to holy, including skeletons. It's kind of ironic that a build split between intelligence and faith is so evenly split between the pros and the cons, but in summary, I think this build can annoy enemies to death by combining quick rolls with large projectiles, turning any fight into a bullet hell. It's advisable to finish matches quickly by overwhelming enemies with the ritual sword and shield buffs active and avoiding close range battles as much as possible. But I'll be making an improved version which aims to tackle this build's existing weaknesses so you can pick between an authentic cosplay or an effective upgrade. Let me know your thoughts on the build and of course subscribe. This is Bite Size Otaku and I hope you enjoyed.